So, this is Black Health Productions, and today we are continuing Crash Bandicoot XX for the Game Boy Advance, and we are going straight into the Temple of Boom. This is basically another very simple forest level with actually two gems. And if I recall correct, it's going to need a color gem color gem to actually access the second one. Unless this game already had the school routes. Which I don't I do not recall right now. Okay, so here we have these arrow crates that can be broken. Usually it's best to break them after you have used them completely. And here we have another bonus route that basically should be pretty easy one. And I almost made a mistake there. You are meant to jump on the crates to actually access the one up crate. And here we have um, yeah, few boxes there. I mean crates. Okay, just an aqua mask. And yeah, we can still break that. Good. Yeah, I forgot to say, we can actually do the belly flop in this game too. And those spikes down there are most likely insta kill spikes, so <laughs> don't test that out. Okay, here we have a little different kind of crate placement. And yeah, dying isn't exactly a good idea in any crash game, especially from 2 and 3 onwards since they have those dead roads. Which record you to beat the level up to that point before... I mean, without dying. And... Blam. Okay, those enemies, those flying enemies are actually from Crash Bandicoot 2, I think. And now we have the level 3 Aquaku. Which is basically invincibility. And there's surely something down here. Hidden away. What a long way. Okay, so yeah, here we both need the red gem to actually get somewhere. Somewhere that has the second clear gem that we are going to come back for later. Much later, I think. So now we can just advance and hope we break all the other boxes. And here we have the stage crystal. Middle of a quite uh, large pit. And yeah, of course, Magma is going to kill <laughs> Crash in one hit. Okay, can I still get that? Yeah, I actually can by doing the crouch jump. Some simple platforming here, and there's the exit. So next we have the Frostbite Cavern, first ice level, and it introduces us the Night Rope Raids. Just don't touch them, that's basically what they are. Okay, so 140 raids. This might be another level that we have to come back to later. Okay, and the ice physics are a little bit different than the original grass game. Oh yeah, now I remember exactly why I don't like these levels. Getting all the boxes uh, is pretty difficult in this version. Mostly because, yeah, they, when you need to break the 
rates. You kinda can't predict some of the placements. And of course you have to push the run button to actually the spin button to actually get away from the barber. At least they give you plenty of one-ups. I mean aquacus during this section. Yeah, I missed quite a few boxes there. And the ice physics are screwing me up. You really have to be careful with them. Because crash slides quite a bit onwards when using them. And the jumping is a little bit finicky. Okay, there we have the bonus room. This is pretty simple again, I think. Yeah, only 22 rates to break. Or crash through. Okay, there was another of those roll the boxes I, that I kinda just broke without getting anything. Okay, now we have the extra these rates. They usually are metallic and they just fill in those outlines with metallic or normal crates or TNTs, nitros, whatever the game has decided. Okay, do we just... Okay, I could not see there was ice platform there. Yeah, misses one crate. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to get that gem later off screen. And then we have lastly just in slime. This is crash to several level. Pretty simple one as you would expect for the first part room. And the bonus stage is already here. And we have 47. Yeah, exactly. This is what I meant. <laughs> Just don't push them when willy-nilly. They usually will block you away from crate or something. Which isn't exactly a good idea. Okay, I want those Pumpa fruits. Those one-ups are never... Okay, I... Did press jump button there, but okay. Maybe a little bit too late then. Okay, remember to break that crate before advancing. Yeah, there is this slide jump actually here, but it's a little bit difficult to do at the times. Okay, I want one up from this. And then we can go onwards. And a few simple grades. Okay, I can just do that. All right then. What didn't land on the TNTs? Okay, do I? No, I don't need to spin to break break that grade. Good. And then we move on towards on the real stage. And yeah, these sliding corridors are pretty... How do I say it? I don't see them as necessary in this game, to be fair. They kind of just slow down the game. Okay, here we have a little bit dimple jump, so I, I had to try the ground jump. Okay, another row at the box, and one up. Of course, in later stages this is getting much harder. And here you are basically... forced to quickly go here. I think we can come back for those crates. 
so you don't need to sacrifice an Aquaku just to get him. Of course you can do that, which I'm going to do now. Bit cruel, but eh, it's design, uh, I guess. Okay, you can actually jump on top of those. Yeah, I gold have just returns later. Okay, still a few, few grades to break. Okay, that was a little bit scary section. The enemies are really simple to kill too. Just jump or spin. Most you can spin at. And just kind of ignore them. Okay, so here we have a line of boxes that we need to break by using the crouch jump. And there we have the crystal. I usually jump and spin just in case. And there we have the clear gem. And we actually opened the boss stage. Which is Dingo Dial. And that we will be doing on the next time. This has been Black Hair Productions. Have a good day, I'm signing off.